This is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I remind you everybody's got a list. Welcome in. We are live here on this Tuesday. Appreciate you guys starting your day with A to Z on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Of course, give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On ATL. I'm at Mark Zinno, M A R K Z I N N O. A lot to get to on today's show, including the Falcons kicking off training camp. We will get to that as well. Brave stumble last night. We'll join. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. And an NFL list, of course, that uh, bears discussing all that coming up here today on the show. And appreciate you guys taking part in Locked On Sports Atlanta and being part of every show here on the network. First segment here brought to you by our friends at Dave. Dave, the app. We'll get to that coming up. But I wanted to start with the Braves real quick. Just let everybody break down what happened last night. An unfortunate loss to the Philadelphia Phillies. And really, you know, uh, as Grant McCauley had said on our postcast last night, it was two pitches that did the Braves in that really led to all five runs. A.J. Minter comes in with a 4-3 lead in the eighth inning and uh, was not able to to hold things down um, the way you expect him to. Uh, it was a He got the first two outs in the eighth very quickly, and then a single, an infield single, and a blast. And all of a sudden, the Braves were down 6-4. Four, rather, and couldn't get out of it. So an unfortunate stumble. They fall two games back, three in the loss column right now to the New York Mets. And, uh, you know, the Mets are starting a big series with the Yankees. So if you get fortunate, then maybe the Yankees can take some games from the Mets and the Braves can uh, can slide right in here. So we'll see how it works out. But, again, got to take care of uh, things tonight as you get Spencer Strider against Aaron Noah, which should be a very good pitching matchup. And the total still set at eight. If some of you guys are into now you can go find that uh, out at certain betting websites, which is a very high number given these two stars. I think Spencer Strider gets right back on track here after the All-Star break. And, of course, Aaron Nola has pitched really well against the Braves this year. So uh, we'll get to more and dive into some of the Braves stuff here before the end of the show. But I wanted to, to start talking about the NFL because – Training camps are opening all across the league, and uh, it is starting to get, to get that warm and fuzzy feeling that football is back. Uh, and the the athletic, Mike Sando of The Athletic, and he's done this every year. He does his quarterback tiers. Uh, we always talk about this, um, or at least I do every year, the quarterback tier list that comes out. And basically what Sando does is he talks to uh, 50 NFL coaches and executives, six general managers, eight head coaches, 10 evaluators, 12 coordinators, six quarterback coaches, seven execs. Um, and, and a whole list of people, and they put together this this ranking of tiers, one, two, three, four, four and I think there's five. I don't know if there's four. Anyway, so, and they rank all the quarterbacks, essentially for scoring scale. And I'll read down to you the top ten, and it shouldn't surprise anybody where it is. As Aaron Rodgers is one, Patrick Mahomes is two, Tom Brady is three, Josh Allen four, Justin Herbert five, Joe Burrow six, Matt Stafford, that's tier one, by the way. Matt Stafford starts tier two. Uh, he's seven. And you get Russell Wilson at eight, Deshaun Watson at nine, Lamar Jackson at 10, and Dak Prescott at 11, uh, Derek Carr at 12, and Kyler Murray at 13. And I think that uh, Matt Ryan at 14, and that finishes out tier two. Now, um, what came out of this list more than anything manifestly was what one exec had to say about Lamar Jackson. Uh, and, and, oh, by the way, I'll get to where, uh, Marcus Mariota was in a second because it's, you know, more kind of disrespect, but first a word from our friends at Dave, you know, we've all been in that position where we're struggling for cash, right? Where we are, uh, just need a little extra money in our pocket to do something, you know, whether it's, you know, put extra gas in our car, buy a gift for somebody. That's where Dave can help. If you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, it can be really stressful when unexpected expenses come up. So now Dave can help get you out of the pinch when you really, really need it. Hindsight's 2020. You can't change the past, but what would you do if you could get a little more cash in your pocket? You can do that now with Dave. Dave's a banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash, more money for your tank, for your bills, wedding gift, whatever it may be. Finally, tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out on any hangups. No interest, 
No credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. Download the Dave app from the App Store now. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for extra cash and get $500 instantly for terms and conditions. Go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. That is Dave. Okay. Uh, Marcus Mariota was 31 of 32 quarterbacks in the league. Only Sam Darnold was behind him, uh, which, again, I think is a little bit flawed. But I'm not here for Marcus Mariota at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm actually enjoying the fact that the expectations are so low. I think it's I think it's really good for Mariota and, and company. Um, but one NFL exec had to say this about Lamar Jackson, and I want to read it to you. Um, and it's really funny. Uh, I want to get the exact quote, uh, and I'll paraphrase it if I can't find it here briefly. Um, but basically, the quote was. Uh, I don't care. Hold on. I'll find it. Now Now I got it. <laughs> I apologize. Should have been better prepared. Uh, I don't give a bleep if he wins league MVP 12 times. I don't think he'll ever be a one as a QB, a tier one quarterback. Um, that's a little bit egregious if you ask me. And I'm not sure, you know, where the Lamar Jackson hate is still stemming from. I've been critical of Lamar Jackson as a passer. Uh, and passing is the most critical part of being a quarterback, but I don't necessarily think for one second uh, the statement of I don't care how many MVPs he has, he's never going to be a one uh, actually holds up. I mean, that's just ridiculous. At some point in time, you've got to concede something that he's doing is working uh, and he's he's being successful at quarterback, and that's enough for his team to win games. And I think that's super important. Um, but if you're not going to concede that, then, uh, yeah, we're, we're, just, we're just throwing – useless arrows at the guy for no reason. I'll say this again, too, about this list. I'm not sure where the Joe Burrow – I feel like the Joe Burrow love is a little bit over the top at this point. And I feel it's kind of the same way about Justin Herbert. Like, Burrow, you can at least argue, because he took his team to a Super Bowl, there's room there. Justin Herbert's never even gotten his team to the playoffs yet. And, and do you want this list to be a measure of just his pure quarterbacking skills in a vacuum or the entire thing, right? Because people out there who talk about quarterback wins are on a stat, that's fine if you want to play that, but then you have to play that every single time. Because if QB wins are on a stat, then Joe Burrow doesn't need to be where he is, comparatively speaking, because he statistically doesn't have the resume. We're doing that. See, and that's where it's conflicting because QB wins aren't a thing. That's true for Justin Herbert, so we could put him in the top five. But QB wins are a thing because Justin Herbert won and got his team to a Super Bowl that now he is also in the top six. Like, that doesn't rub with me. That, that, that doesn't make any sense. So if it's just about the quarterback skills in a vacuum, I don't believe Burrow is the sixth best quarterback in the league. I think it's prisoner of the moment stuff. And we're talking about pure quarterback skills. Um, he's not that high. Herbert is, talent-wise, yeah, Herbert is. And I get it, Burrow was a number one overall pick, but that has nothing to do with where he is right now as a quarterback in this league. I mean, you know, you have to take into to account the entire situation, and that's kind of what bothers me about some of this stuff uh, when you put these lists together is that they're all over the place. They really are. Like, they're genuinely all over the place, and it's very hard to figure out which way is up with some of these things. The lists are fun to look at, and they're fun to read. And... uh I, I get it. You know, it's an opinion for everybody. But still, you know, I mean, I could argue that Matt Ryan, from a quarterback skills standpoint, is better than Joe Burrow. I mean, I, I, as much as we, we bang on Matt Burrow's – Matt Burrow. <laughs> Matt Ryan's arm, um, Burrow's isn't, like, elite. It's not an elite-level arm talent. It's not Mahomes. It's not Rodgers. He's, he's not up in that – it's not Allen. He's not up in that class arm talent-wise. And neither is Matt Ryan. So, you know, it, it, it's a question of the prism in which you want to put these things. I think some guys, again, they, they, they view one guy one way and another guy another way, and that sort of bothers me. But check out the list for yourself. It's on The Athletic. It's really good. I enjoy it every year. So that's why we talk about it. All right, coming up next, uh, some expectations and camp battles for the Atlanta Falcons as they get training camp under way. That's next right here on A to Z on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. 
Welcome back to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Guys, YouTube channel subscribers are blowing up. Already over 2,000 subscribers. Appreciate all the love and support from all the fans out there of all the shows here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Of course, this is A to Z. Every day you can hear Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, ATL Day Ones with Jarvis Davis and Tanita Batiste. Don't forget about our Braves postcast. Grant McCauley, and a host of others, Locked On Falcons and Locked On Hawks, and Aaron Freeman from Locked On Falcons will be very busy as we get training camp started up. This segment brought to you by our friends at betonline.net. And Atlanta Falcons training camp is going to get underway here. I just want to get you guys some important dates um, that you need to know um, as far as practices, if you're going to go out there. Uh, starting on July 29th at 9.30 a.m., these are the the 13 opportunities that fans can come to Flowery Branch. July 29th and 30th at uh, 9.30 a.m. In fact, I'll be out there broadcasting live uh, on the 30th uh, at 10 a.m. So August 1st, 2nd, uh, 3rd, all those are at 9.30 a.m. I'm sorry, August 1st is at 10 a.m. 2nd, 3rd are at 9.30 a.m. 5th and 6th of August at 9.30 a.m. August 8th at 10 a.m. August 9th and 10th at 9.30 a.m. And then August 15th, is at Mercedes-Benz Stadium at 6.30 p.m. And then they're going to actually open it up for one of the joint practices the Falcons are having on the 24th and the 25th. But the Jacksonville Jaguars teams are starting to do that now. They do a joint practice, and then they lead into their preseason game. So um, these are great opportunities for fans to be out there. Uh, and on the 30th at 9.30 a.m., the NFL Network and ABC will air five hours of coverage of training camps. The Falcons are doing their part to make the day an event. On the 30th, it'll be – um, Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot addressing the team at Flowery Branch. Uh, former Falcons will be there. Freddie Falcon, Falcons cheerleaders, food trucks, whatever. You know, uh, money, 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 right? Uh, and that's where it is. Okay. Uh, let's get to some of the information here about the Falcons because I think it's important to, to recognize that uh, the expectations for this team obviously are very low. But that also means that you can exceed them rather easily if you do a couple of things right. Uh, and in particular, again, the, the quarterback situation here uh, is up in the air. I told you about the list, and Marcus Mariota was 31, uh, and you, you you hear about the way things go with uh, uh, with these lists. Uh, one write-up is that Mariota is a tough guy, and teammates respect him. He's smart. That's one talent evaluator. He has a chance, but they're not real talented around him. They're young. Uh, a quarterback's coach compared it to Mitch Trubisky, and this is all from Mike Sando's article. Biggest thing you have there in Atlanta is a lack of offensive line play. Uh, they do have a good tight end, some rotational receivers, some runners that should help them. I think Mariota does a similar job to Lamar in that he can run and pass, but just not at uh, the same production level. So, um, again, I don't think this is Marcus Mariota's job to keep. Uh, as I've said repeatedly, I think that it will be a situation where – we are looking at Desmond Ritter starting around week eight against Carolina. That's the, the date that I've scratched on the wall. Um, but let's see how camp goes from a competition standpoint, because I think, honestly, you'll get a real sense of how quick uh, Ritter is going to be able to get in based off of what he's in the preseason. You know, I think that is a big, um, you know, thing. If he can prove off the bat that he can hold his own and not be overwhelmed by defenses and the speed of the game and everything else. And I know Arthur Smith has said that Ritter is a very heady quarterback and he's really smart and all those things. But that said, you know, uh, the the live game action doesn't, you know, doesn't matter how heady you are. It matters if you can understand it and do it. So uh, that's, I think, what we'll look for here early on with Desmond Ritter because, you know, he is he is a, a guy who's got to learn certain things about the game. And again, he's not facing... Houston's defensive end or Tulsa's defensive end, right? These are legitimate guys who are faster than anybody he's ever seen play the sport before. So that's going to be an adjustment. I think we'll look for that from day one. Now, some of the other position battles here uh, that we'll get to in just a moment. First, a word from our friends at betonline.net. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews of news and every of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource 
for all of your sports wagering information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today bet online where the game starts and again braves uh phillies total tonight set at eight take the under that's what we're gonna do also no runs in the first inning of that game one of my favorite bets out there so we'll get to that okay some of the other position battles that we need to watch and i think these are somewhat worthwhile um caleb mcgarry versus jermaine ifetti and what is interesting about this is that if mcgarry can't win the job I, he is sort of useless to this team at this point in time um and they didn't pick up his fifth year option uh and he doesn't count that much against the cap so uh this is a very cheap player to have here, but that pretty much will signal the end of his time in Atlanta. If he cannot win this job, he's done here, and he's probably going to be relegated to a backup tackle, maybe get another start, a chance to start somewhere else on another team, but there's no reason for the Falcons to bring him back. So that's the important point of this. And again, uh, we can have that whole conversation about, you know, the previous regime drafting versus this regime drafting and what it means and how it goes and everything else. Um, but uh, manifestly, the organization has another first round pick that doesn't pan out and that's you know uh problematic so we'll see uh how that battle works out then you have nick uh kwiatkowski uh quite Qu 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 kwiatkowski i can't even say his last name it's too difficult for me against deon jones the funny part is here is that um ski's gonna win this job because deon jones is not gonna be here so this is an easy one to figure out um there, there's there's no other the Falcons stack so many linebackers on this roster to find somebody who could play not named Deion Jones that somebody else is going to play not named Deion Jones. I mean, it, 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 that this is really that simple from that standpoint. Um, I, I think that's another position matter. But again, with Jones on the pup list, you know, it's not really going to matter. Uh, former Georgia Bulldog, former New York Giant, Lorenzo Carter is here, uh, and a host of others that are really, really um, worthwhile to watch as we head into camp. And Carter has really meshed well in the locker room with a lot of his teammates. And um, he's certainly uh, going to enjoy playing in front of his home, home crowd. I think the other things you look at, obviously, Tyler Algier, how quickly can he get inserted into the starting lineup? Um, and if there is a chance uh, for him to, to win the starting job, I think he'll be the guy uh, that you'll see taking a majority of the reps. I think the, the final thing that we look at at least that I'll keep my eyes on in training camp. And as I've said repeatedly, that I'm not giving passes out to uh, Arthur Smith and Kyle Pitts uh, at all this year when it comes to targets. But I am curious to see how Drake London fits into the target share and what that is going to look like and how it's going to play out because uh, it is something to watch and how they want to develop this offense. I have a ton of faith in Arthur Smith. I think he's a really good coach. But I also believe that there is a certain amount of um, there's a certain amount of balance he's got to strike here with these guys to justify taking them that high and um, to make sure that this team is a team that actually you know can can produce something offensively. You took all these guys on offense to create mismatches and be talented players and everything else. Well, guess what? Um, you've got to be able to get them the ball if you'd like them to be able to showcase that. So. That's where they are from a, from a camp standpoint. Again, I'll be out there uh, intermittent times. Again, broadcasting live. Others just sitting there and watching. So if you see me, come say hello. Coming up next, uh, this is one of the weirdest quarterback clauses you've ever seen in a contract, and it's only there for one of two reasons. We'll tell you that next right here on A to Z, Unlocked on Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Final segment here of A to Z, Unlocked on Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts, search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Uh, this final segment here brought to you by our friends at Coffee AM. But it's sort of a combination shovel of wisdom and topic. So here we go. Brace yourselves because it's time for the shovel of wisdom. Today, my shovel goes to the Arizona Cardinals. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you saw this. This is a um, this is something that uh, I, we haven't really seen before, and at least according to certain writers, this is unprecedented. 
but apparently it's part of the new contract that the Arizona Cardinals gave Kyler Murray his new $230 million contract. It mandates four hours, at least four hours of weekly film study. Uh, and this contract has actually been put out online. I've seen a couple people tweet out there that even wrap four had it and everybody else. And um, the clause is labeled an independent study committee. Now, uh, basically mandating that a quarterback dedicate extra time outside of normal filming study, outside of normal practice time, to be in the facility and studying more film, um, is one of those things that you only do for one of two reasons, okay? And I, I, I kind of think one is worse than the other, um, but one is worse than the other from a football standpoint. One is worse from the other from a, a personality standpoint, if you will. Reason one that the Arizona Cardinals have done this is because they have diagnosed that he needs more film study, doesn't understand certain things, isn't reading defense as well, isn't making smart decisions, and basically needs this to get better at the position of quarterback. Now, that's the one that's bad from a football standpoint. And I genuinely don't think that's the case, because if it was the case, you would not have paid the guy $230 million. Like, that's just ludicrous to pay a quarterback that you legitimately have diagnosed as somebody who needs more film study and doesn't understand the game that he's playing. That's a bad, bad look, right? Like, that's not what you want from your quarterback at all. But you're mandating the film study because obviously you believe that he is somebody that needs extra film study. Now, we've seen this before, right? We've seen this with other quarterbacks. We've seen this with guys, you know, again, Michael Vick admitted he did not study film uh, enough. And, and, and it was something that his second time around, he was a much better quarterback after coming out of federal prison than he was before. Despite how electric he was, he was a smarter quarterback. And it's a good thing that you know, I said this about this really just smart, very, very heady, right? Like these are all the things that he said about him that really uh, made him such a palpable choice for quarterback. Okay. The other reason that the Arizona Cardinals put this clause in there is for something that is not football related. I'll tell you what that is in a second. First, a word from our friends at Coffee AM, uh, the best small batch producer in America. And it's right here uh, in Georgia, in Atlanta. And you guys uh, have to try coffee. We really tell you about them every single day because it's part of the regimen. I just get up in the morning, get my Coffee AM, pick up, pop it right in, and boom. Why? Freshest, best tasting coffee out there. You get coffees from around the world. Um, and they're so fresh because they are roasted and shipped the same day or close to it. That's super important. Again, you're going to get this box when you open it. The smell is going to hit you right in the face. And these coffees are so good. You've already talked about all the different coffees from the world, whether it's Kenya, Sumatra, a rainforest, which I assume is from Brazil. I don't care where it's from. It's fantastic. But nonetheless, uh, this is Coffee AM. It's the freshest coffee you can get. And most of their coffees, okay, are organic, fair trade, direct trade, expertly crafted blends, flavored espresso uh, teas and gift sets and a whole lot more. Go to coffeeam backslash, coffeeam.com backslash locked on today and take a look at their full menu of coffees, teas, and gift sets. That's coffeeam.com backslash locked on. Use the coupon code locked on at checkout to get 15% off your first order of coffees, teas, and gift sets. Coffee AM, the best small batch coffee roaster in America, and it's right here in Atlanta. All right. The second reason why you are doing this with Kyler Murray, okay, is very simple. You are now needling and and sort of uh, uh, irritating your star that you just paid $230 million to. That's all this is. This is automatically, this is the way the Cardinals got back at Kyler Murray for, um, for, asking for a contract this early for not waiting it out right like this is this is the this is petty uh and some where's, where's my where's my man Jarvis Davis from ATL day ones this is petty and uh and and it's ridiculous you don't do this sort of stuff if you were that angry about giving him the contract then simply don't give him the contract 
let him walk. But the idea that you're going to needle him and, and continue to grind on him and, and say, get in the film room, get in the film room, get in the film room, because if you don't, your contract is voided. <clears throat> what, what sort of relationship are you building with your franchise quarterback? I think that's ludicrous. I think it's bad business. If you don't like the guy and you don't think he's worth $230 million, then what'd you sign him for? Let him walk. Like, this is a bad precedent to set because this reverberates through the rest of the locker room. Your next potential free agents, they'll hear about this from Kyler. They'll hear about how this negotiation went down. They'll hear all about the way the organization thought of their, quote, star quarterback. It's a terrible business decision to do this. If Kyler Murray needs to be forced to study, then you shouldn't have paid him anyway. It's that simple. I mean, there is no way around it. If Kyler Murray has to be treated like a high school student and forced to do certain things to get better at the game, then you shouldn't have signed him. I mean, all of this points to the fact that you shouldn't have signed him. You did anyway. And sometimes there's part of me that understands that because nobody wants to go searching for another quarterback, right? Dance with the devil that you brought. The devil that you know is better than the one that you know, whatever it is. You get the point. I mean, it's hard to find quarterbacks. It's why the, the Falcons hung on to Matt Ryan for an extra year. It really was because simply they just didn't want to have to go find another quarterback yet. And then it got to a point where they had to make a, a decision. And boom, they finally got rid of him. They did it two years too late. That's on them. That's on them. And now you feel the repercussions of it. But other teams see that and go, well, we don't want to end up like that. We can't end up like that. So we we have to sign the guy. But then if you, if that's the case, then you just don't treat him this way. Do you think that he's really going to play nice in the sandbox with you for the rest of the way out when you are sitting there standing over him with a clock counting the seconds going, mm, oh, oh, oh. it's three hours and 57 minutes. You've got three more minutes of film study. You're not leaving early. I mean, chill out, Scrooge McDuck. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's, it's beyond ridiculous that this sort of thing is happening. It's a bad look for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, and to a certain extent, it's a bad look for Murray. Because why would you agree to this? Why would you agree to this deal that, that just puts you in such a bad light? I am so, so curious to see how this thing plays out. And I don't think it plays out well uh, for all parties involved. It's, it, you know, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers, they, they rub friction, this, that, and the other. Great. But, you know, Aaron Rodgers wins MVPs. That's not Kyler Murray. Aaron Rodgers is a Super Bowl. That's not Kyler Murray. There's a big difference there. The, the Green Bay Packers as an organization have won Super Bowls. That's not the Arizona Cardinals. It's completely different. So this is going to be a lot of fun to watch this go down. I don't think it ends well, to say the least. All right, that'll do it for me here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. A to Z this week, back tomorrow with another show. You guys have a great day. Don't take any crap from anybody. See ya.